Hey, thanks for tuning in. It's Rob Z, uh, Facebook marketer and consultant expert, maybe. It's kind of a pretentious term, but I used it anyways. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the boost option and why you shouldn't use it. And we're going to talk about Facebook ads and how you can create ads easily and why you shouldn't use the Facebook ads option. So why is the boost post not something that you should use? I'm not saying it doesn't work because it can work. It's definitely not totally useless. But it's giving Facebook more control over where your ad goes. And it's kind of like, it's kind of saying to Facebook, I don't know what I'm doing. Will you please do this for me? And that might not be the best move for you. You might waste a lot of money doing that. So you want to use the ads platform. Very important. But the ads platform can seem very intimidating. So I understand that. That's why I wanted to make this video to explain this to you, to make it easy for you. Okay? So let's go to Facebook. And let's go up here to the top to create. We're going to click add. As we get into the ads platform here, it's going to open up. And we're going to go to switch to quick creation. You see that right there? This makes it a lot easier. This looks confusing, and the further you go in, it could get more confusing. Switch to quick, quick creation. You're going to have this all set up like this right here. I'm going to want, in the beginning here, I just know I want video views. I do video a lot, so I run video ads and video ads are easier to retarget to. So something that's gonna happen after this video is I'm going to give you the option to click a link on this post, and it's gonna take you to a landing page on my website where I'm gonna show you how to retarget people. So when you do videos, think about this. Like if you run, a, an, say you're a, a jeweler or a car dealer or um, a restaurant or whatever it might be, you can post photos of your product, right? You can only retarget so many people with those photos. But when you run ads, maybe 15 second ads, maybe one minute ads, maybe two minute ads, you can go back through and you can find somebody. Say you ran a two minute ad, you can find somebody who watched 50 to 100% of that video and you can retarget that person. That way you know they at least spent the time to watch at least a portion of your video so they're somewhat interested in what you're talking about. Maybe they haven't purchased yet, but you've got them on some sort of funnel. You've got them on some sort of, of lead generation. So videos are important for that because you can select people who have watched more of your video and you know they're already interested. That's why I do video. So that'd be my suggestion to you. And think about it like this also. If you're, if you're a car dealership, take a 30-second video of a car. If you're a jeweler, take a 30-second video of jewelry. If you're a restaurant, take a 30-second video of the food. Just kind of pan around it. Show some of the food. Like It can just be a still video, really. Just a, But the idea is videos get you a lot more traction and can take you a lot further. So you have all these options in here. You can choose the option that you want. I'm going to go with video view. And I'm going to say video test ad. And I'm going to label these. So I'm going to make another video for you guys explaining the difference between the campaign, the ad set, and the ad, because that is very important and also can be very confusing. I'm just going to copy and paste video test ad in all three of these sections and then change them to what I need them to be. That's ad set. If I could do this, <laughs> my mouse is sticking for some reason. And I leave test and budget optimization alone. Go to save to draft. It's going to save this as a draft, as you can see. Here's my campaign. It's all set up. It looks good. If you want to set a spending limit, you can do that. Pick it. Go for it. Then go up top here from campaign into the ad set. Now you're in the ad set. What I do is I always start my ads low. I start them at like five bucks. Uh, and I'll run multiple ads and test them against each other to see how they work. You have an, a start date set up. I never run as ongoing because I forget how long my ads are running for. I'll forget they're running and I'll just spend money when I don't want to. Like I want an ad to end, I'll forget to stop it and I'll just blow money. So I'll set this one. I usually run ads for like three or four days to test them out at $5 to see how they're doing. Uh, you can go down to here. We'll cut. We'll cover custom audiences later. That's important uh, whenever you're retargeting. For right now, not so much. Where are you running this ad to? If you're a small business, you're probably not running it to the whole entire United States. Unless you're doing e-commerce, then awesome for you. Uh, maybe I'm trying to find, I live in Pennsylvania, so maybe I'm trying to find people in the state college, Penn State market, okay? I'm going to set this up. I like to do like 10 miles because it's not that big of a city, and it's more concentrated on the people that are going to see it. You can choose your options here, age and gender. I'm not trying to activate ageism or trigger anybody, so I'm going to leave that where it is. Now, when it comes to detailed targeting, this is kind of important. Detailed targeting, only target one demographic at a time, okay? One at a time, and then you can go through, I'm making another video on how to duplicate your ad, so you can duplicate it and run it to different people, okay? But right now, 
I'm just going to go with one target. Say it's a jewel. I work with a jewelry store. So I'm going to go jewelry. Say it's Pandora jewelry. Now I'll then create this ad and duplicate it. Maybe I'll run it then to uh, Zales. Then maybe I'll run another uh, duplication to Jared's, but only do one interest, one target at a time. Okay, that's important. And also, this is very important. When you're editing your placements, where are you putting this? I want to run this just on Facebook. You should never run all of these. Never. I see a lot of people do this. This is a mistake. Never run to all of these. Please don't do that. I'm going to take off the audience network. Now, if you want to run the same ad to Facebook and Instagram, then once you create the ad, duplicate it and run it to Instagram. But right now, I don't want it to be on Instagram. Uh, now, on Facebook, it's running to all of these different options. I don't want that to happen. Why? Because when somebody goes to Facebook, where are they usually at? On the feed. That's usually the only place they're at is on the feed. So this is coming from me and other Facebook experts. Trust me on this. Just run to the feed. That's the most important spot. Okay? You can go back and change that if you want to, but just try this out. Now, if you're doing video, uh, if you have a video that's like 15 seconds long, you would probably want to do through play. That means it'll deliver your ad to people who will watch all of your video if you have a longer video, you can pick one of these two options. I usually go with 10 second video views. The impressions is good. Everything's set up the way I like it. I'm gonna go up here to the top from the ad set to the actual ad itself. Now, one of the complaints I get or objections I get from people that I work with is that they use the boost post option because then they can put it on their, their page and then they can boost it and they can see the results. So they can see uh, how the ad is performing, if people liked, if they commented, if they shared. And I agree, that is important, because usually when you run an ad on Facebook ads and the ads platform, you don't really get to see where that post went. You don't get to see the engagement, so you can't see the likes, comments. It's harder to find your ad and see who's engaging with it. So what you can do is first post your video, whatever it is, on your Facebook page. Post it on your page, then go into Ads Manager and use existing posts. Very simple, right? Then you can just use an existing post. I'll pick one that did well. This has like 2,000 likes and comments. It's here, boom, the video's there. Make sure you put your captions in, super important. It might take you a little while. Make sure you enunciate when you make your video, number one. That way, Facebook will be able to read your text better to, to transcribe what you're saying better, right? Uh, and then you go through and edit this. If it's like an, a minute long video, it shouldn't take you too long to edit this. It's very important, crucial to do that, so please do that. And uh, then when you go down into tracking, turn on that Facebook pixel. I have another video about the Facebook pixel, so if you need to know more about that, I can explain that later. This is a, a dummy account, so this is a not active pixel. Make sure you have that set up. You hit publish, boom, your ad will start running. It'll go from in draft over here to review, and then it'll be published, your ad will run, and you're golden. Hopefully that's an easy setup an easy way for you to not use the boost post option, use that quick creation, use the Facebook ads platform because Facebook rewards you for using it. So do that. Now, if you're watching this and you're thinking, man, I want to know how to retarget these videos. So if you made a video ad and you want to know how to retarget the people who watched 50 to 100% of your video, we're going to do that in the link above. Click that link. You'll go to a landing page on my website and I'll show you all the details of how to do that. Thank you so much for watching.